Click the first link in the description for the best Ask Reddit content. Today I fucked up by relieving myself with a q-tip, obligatory this happened over the last couple weeks up to yesterday. I should also preface this with some warning as it may be graphic slash gross for some. Background info, I work in a production environment with lots of sirens, machinery, etc. Which requires use of PPE, especially earplugs. I also wear headphones and use q-tips regularly, primarily keeping it to my outer ear. So a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that when I would lay on my left side with my hand propping my head up, like I always do when I'm busting out that big, fat 2020 quarantine style, chill scapade, my ear on the same side would get stuffy, almost swollen feeling. No pain, but my hearing was ever so slightly diminished. Soon as I would sit up, it would clear up. Ha, huh, old man. That's odd, I thought not but not much more. As the days progressed leading up to the fuck up, I recall a moment or two where my equilibrium was off. I had been avoiding resting my head on that side, but there was a stumble in question along with one particularly brief moment of a light-headed, woozy feeling. Easy to blame that shit on some tequila at the time, but I was wrong as fuck. I mentioned above I typically have something in, on, and or around my ears, they're probably my second most useful organ depending on your idea of useful. Between my glasses to see a damn thing, my mask to not breathe covid it's covid, my earplugs to not damage my hearing, and my headphones for media, those ears are pretty damn handy. As a result, my ears do get itchy from time to time, and I'll admit, I do slap a sausage finger in there to wiggle out a twinge of discomfort. Several days after this all began, I began using my q-tips to get a little deeper since my phalanx friend was not cutting it. The relief was great. We had a good thing going. Or so I thought. Tuesday morning, I woke up with an itchy ear. I grabbed a q-tip. I went in. I got down in there really good. I scratched the itch. Roll your eyes in the back of your head itch scratching action. Orgasmic in nature. I may or may not have came. It was after the shockwave of bliss faded that I made my final move and poof. My ear felt like I magically erased it from existence. Like someone sealed it up like King Tut's burial chamber. Like I achieved in a piece by sealing myself off from the outside world. The q-tip got me. You're a fucking idiot, was the first thing that came to mind but I could only hear it from the right side of my head. The two days until Thursday felt even more strange and longer than the days prior. Like some weird dystopia or post-apocalyptic event in the making. Do I have a tumor that I've just jammed further inside myself? Fuck, what if it's a dead bug in there? The David goes to the dentist am I going to feel like this forever phrase came to mind a few times. I really didn't know what to think, and functioning properly ain't happening when everything you say and hear half sounds like someone just going wah 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 along with my equilibrium on hiatus. Phone calls? Yeah I'm gonna take that on the right. I'd hear something happen behind me and would always turn right because that's where the sound always came from. I noticed it pulled on the area between my cheekbone and my ear towards my face. I could hear the tiniest bit better, but this shit was getting old fast. I am an omni-turner for fuck's sake. I mentioned what happened to my girlfriend and said I may need to hit up the clinic. Her response was to get one of those ear cleaning syringes to flush out anything in there and that her mom used used to do it to her and her siblings twice a year. At this point, I didn't care what needed to happen, but something needed to happen or my brain might start oozing out the other side from frustration like some mental menstruation gone manic. We went to the store to pick up the necessary equipment for a cruise down an air canal to corral whatever chaos she may encounter and got back to her place. Drops went in. Cold slime slithered its way towards the core of my cranium. Time was not even present as I noted the sensation of some shifts in whatever was happening in there. Is this what a rusty bone? feels like when you put WD-40 on it? The mental image of some cave-like creature being dripped on by what could best be described as snot came to mind. Some minutes later, we headed to the bathroom. Girlfriend was ready. I was ready. The thing I casted away was ready. I put my head over the bathtub, ear faced down, and she grabbed the ear baster, stuck it in gently, counted it down and squeezed. A rush of water fell out like my hopes 
and now it felt like I've got 5 pounds of water in my ear. A second attempt was made but to no avail. Ok let's tilt the ear upward, one of us said, I'll give her the credit. I mean she was doing my dirty work. 1, 2, 3 ooh wee 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 woo, comma she screamed. What is it? I replied as my face was drenched and had felt this gigantic popping sound in my head. She took the plunger maybob and hit my ear with it. I hear the tub, and I looked down to see. A fucking peanut kernel sized ball of golden brown goodness fucking gracious I'm glad that is out of my body ear wax. I screamed, she screamed, we all screamed. I spoke and could literally hear my words reverberating off every wall in that house. It's possible there was some dino DNA in there, but I wasn't gonna fuck with it. I have a new lease on life, and I also have supersonic hearing now. My arch nemesis has been defeated, King Tut's tomb has been reopened, and there is nothing to ear but ear itself. Thank you, awesome girlfriend, and thank you for reading about my idiocy. Too long didn't read, my ear had slowly built up a bunch of earwax which I officially clogged with a q-tip only to be discovered later by giving birth to a forbidden golden raisin. Edit, thank you for the gold stranger. Wow that phrase applies in the worst way here. Edit, thank you stranger number 2. Edit number 3. Thank you for the awards. I will pass them on to my non nugget offspring. Edit number 4, for you sick fuckers. The golden child, click at your own risk. Edit number 5, been a long day, but thank you all for your praise, advice, and feedback. Some are saying the post has been removed. This edit may be a bit of a test on that, but nevertheless, I am glad to have entertained, repulsed, and enlightened anyone who is wondering what it feels like to have a stubborn raisin baby delivered through your ear hole. Good night and much love, Reddit. How dare you write such a graphic novel about a problem I gave too often and make me think oh what if it is a fucking bug. I'm sorry man. Here's a hug. As the girlfriend who did this, can confirm. Hearing researcher here. The general rule is, don't put anything in your ear that's smaller than your elbow. Now obviously there are a few exceptions, but there are things actually designed for hearing, I, E. Earring aids, earbuds, and earplugs. But Q-tips, or cotton buds, for folk over here, are bad. Best way to make sure your ears are clear is to tip your head to the side for a few seconds when you go for a shower and rinse them out with warm water. The skin in your ears grows outwards, and carries wax along with it. And wax is good anyway. It helps clear your ears of dust, dead skin, and bacteria. If you feel like your ears are getting really clogged, Buy some almond oil and use that. Warm it up, sit the bottle in a bowl of warm water for a few minutes, lie on your left side and put a few drops in your right ear. After 5 minutes, lie on your right, put some tissues under your right ear, and repeat for your left ear. Then lie on your left again to empty your right ear. It's worth noting that the golden color of Ops Wax means it was still relatively soft, so would most likely have come out naturally without oral probing. Oh, and if it gets really bad or problems persist, go see a medical professional. Edit, well this blew up. And I just add, wear ear protection. Going to a gig, a party, somewhere with loud music, hopefully not at the moment, COVID-19 and all. Question mark wear some earplugs. Yes, I know they're smaller than your elbow, but they're designed to protect your ears. Smile. I get that done by my audiologist twice a year. I wear earplugs all the time at work, so anything and everything gets all crammed in there. It is both disgusting and sweet, sweet release. My Asian friend mocks me relentlessly for it, as she has the gene that makes her ear wax powdery. Oh, I ask if she wants a milkshake, and we both get over it. Oh forbidden milkshake would make an interesting band name. Can I get info on the tear wax removable? I love q-tips but my hearing is awful and I'm wondering if I should try that lol. Edit, om guys thank you for telling me how bad q-tips are, I know this. I don't need any more suggestions on how to clean out my ears. I don't need any more suggestions for ear wax porn. Thank you for your concern and support. 
Today I fucked up by not looking to the left of my laptop 5 years ago. I've had my laptop for roughly 5 years now. It was my first big step into improving my gaming setup. I know laptops aren't peak gamer but it works for me. I had my own headphones with a jack for a year before they broke. Then I got my first gaming headset. The only issue is that it's USB and I have USBs on the right side of my laptop but the cord comes from the left headphone. So I decided the headset and laptop were so good I can deal with a cord across my lap. Years come and go and I've gotten another headset with a longer cord. While I'm used to having a cord over my lap this cord kept getting tangled up by my feet. Although again, I suck it up. One night I decided to bring my laptop out to play Jackbox with my friends. My one friend's phone was dying so she asked if she could plug it into my laptop. Not giving a crap I said sure and she plugged in the USB to my laptop on the left side. The left. Side. I didn't even process it until I got back to my room but I've had a USB port on the left side of my laptop the whole time. Too long didn't read, once I got a headset that plugs in via USB I plugged it in the right side of my laptop instead of checking the left side, leading to years of a cord pointlessly on my lap. Or you could do what I do, same situation, only no USB on left, and have the cord wrap around the back side of the laptop and plug in on the right, most headsets are easily long enough for that. I can't believe there are people who don't do that, that's basically common sense for stuff like mouses. Once read a today I fucked up from a lad who installed a graphics card and for two years didn't have it enabled in the BIOS. Or not alone buddy haha. -ha. The first thing I check on a new laptop is what ports it has, and then laugh maniacally thinking of owners of MacBook Air. Also, you could have wrapped the cord around slash above your neck. I can't believe someone could own a laptop for 5 years and not know about how many USB ports they have. I don't want to say this is BS, what he posted, but it definitely stinks. I mean, 5 years. And he's telling me he didn't notice it for 5 years. Now this is a real today I fucked up. Like one of the made up sexual mishaps constantly posted on here. But meaningful. Today I fucked up by refusing anesthesia and thinking I was going to die on the operating table. I got in a severe rollover car accident on the freeway and it has completely fucked my back. I've been required to lay flat on my back 24-7 for the past month and a half since the accident. After more x-rays, scans, and second opinions than I can count, we established that I needed a procedure done on my spine. Since scheduling is a bitch with COVID, I've been getting trigger point injections to manage the pain while I've been waiting for procedure day. The day before, I get a call from the surgery center to confirm my appointment. I ask her for details about how the procedure will go and how long my driver will have to wait for me. She says that it's a nearly painless procedure and that I won't need a driver because I won't even need any form of sedation. I was pretty shocked because that wasn't in line at all with what my doctors were saying it would be like, but I just thought, cool. Sounds like a bit of a relief from what I was expecting. So here we are on procedure day. I make the first dumb decision of the day by choosing to drive myself. Given the level of pain I'm in and the situation with my back, I really shouldn't be driving. But I've been feeling insecure about how much friends and family have had to help me the past 50 days, so I get a big boost of independence and convince myself that it's a good idea. I get to the check-in area and the first thing the nurse says to me is, is your driver here to sign that they will take care of you? To which I replied, I was told I wouldn't need a driver. After a few minutes of confusion we figure out that whoever called me yesterday was reading my file wrong and thought I was coming in for trigger point injections. She confirms the procedure I'm getting and informs me that I do need a driver and I will need to be put under anesthesia. At this point I'm scrambling, I'm in too much pain to be thinking clearly. The idea of calling someone to come be there with me doesn't even cross my mind, and all I can think about is having to put this procedure off for any longer and continue being in as much pain as I'm in. A nurse sees how flustered I am and says, 
Well, I supposed you are technically allowed to refuse anesthesia. So now I'm really confused. I start thinking about how if they'd even let me have the option of not using anesthesia then it can't be that bad, right? I got my wisdom teeth done without it. I'm pretty tough. I've gotten through all this pain so far, haven't I? So I agree to move forward without anesthesia. I am a fucking idiot. I'm gowned up, face down on the operating table, plugged into vital monitors, and surrounded by a surgeon and multiple nurses all doing their thing. The pain of the procedure is excruciating, but it's all localized to just my spine so I'm focusing as hard as possible to get through it. Suddenly, it was like all the pain in my spine exploded into every inch of my body. I start seeing huge black spots and feel like I'm passing out. I hear the beeping on my monitors start going supersonic. It felt like everyone in the room started scrambling and doing something different, but I have no idea what is going on. I focused everything in me to not black out because at the time I felt like that would have been the end of me. My heart was racing faster than I've ever experienced and every nerve in my body was at 10 tenths pain for what felt like an eternity. I get wheeled to the recovery room and every nurse who comes by to check on me makes a comment about how they can't believe I went through that procedure without anesthesia and that I am so strong. All I can think about is how fucking stupid I am and that no one should ever be given the option to go through that awake. I have to have a follow up procedure in a few weeks and I can promise you one thing, I will be knocked out hard for that one. Too long didn't read, had to have a surgical procedure for my back after a car accident. A miscommunication, poor planning, and a momentary lapse of judgment led me to refuse anesthesia. I thought I was going to die of pain during the procedure. Afterwards, nurses tell me how brave I was but I just think I'm an idiot. It was a really bad idea. Never again. Edit. Wow. I did not expect this to blow up. Thank you so much. I've been bored as hell due to this injury and being able to interact with everyone on here the past few days has been incredible. Also, there are a few doubters on here, and I know you have no reason to believe me, but I can promise that my experience was 100% true. A few medical professionals have said things along the lines of this is made up because they wouldn't even do an insert my exact procedure here without anesthesia. Well, I don't know what to tell you but they did. Every country, surgical center, doctor, nurse, etc. is going to have different methods. I don't doubt your knowledge in your field, but you can't honestly claim to know everything about the practices of everywhere in the world. Thanks for reading Smile. That sounds insane. I had no idea that you could even get surgery without being put under. I'm a bit confused about it too. The whole time after I was thinking, how could they ever let anyone go through that awake? I'd like to think I have a super high pain tolerance. I'm pretty active and adventurous and beat my body up pretty bad without complaint. Even almost refused to go to the hospital from the scene of my accident because I thought I'd be fine, which is hilarious knowing now just how badly injured I was. But, with all that being said maybe I was just a baby on that particular day? I dunno though, they said hardly anyone does it without anesthesia. Not too much relief right now, but it will come. I'm optimistic smile thanks for asking. So as a pain physician and an anesthesiologist, this story doesn't really make any sense. I doubt this story. Anesthesia is for your doctor's sake as much as it is yours and removal of pain is a happy coincidence. Anesthesia stops you moving, helps prevent a shock response, prevents seizures and slows bleeding. I actually find it almost impossible to believe you received major spinal surgery in a first world country without anesthesia. To the point where I would strongly recommend reporting every member involved with the procedure to your country's equivalent of opera. Edit. Also the fact that Op refuses to elaborate on what the procedure actually was and keeps downplaying how serious it was doesn't make this any more believable. Obviously didn't happen. Nurses wouldn't suggest going without anesthesia on a major operation. Sorry, this is horseshit. I'm a surgical eye and at a trauma hospital. Zero way you had a fusion or any other procedure, especially spine surgery, without anesthesia. It doesn't happen. It's not safe. You jerk half an inch the wrong time, 
the surgeon bovies your spinal cord. You take a deal breath at the wrong time, you could end up paralyzed. This is 150% made up horse shit. Not to mention this account is literally one day old at the time this was posted. Karma Farmer. If Op wants to dispute this, he can tell me exactly what sounds he heard, what he was positioned on and how, how long the surgery was, what dressing was placed on his surgical site, and other details. Otherwise, he's a lying shit. Super weird that was even an option. Even for trigger points slash epidels in my back, my doctor required me to be under anesthesia just to minimize movement. Congrats on powering through that. When the pain first started and I was thinking more clearly, I kept repeating to myself don't move, don't move, don't move. I was terrified of causing them to mess up. 